we have a guest with Christian. Mm -hmm. We are indeed with a lady that won her third consecutive mm -hmm. uh, game. Congratulations, uh, Jennifer. Welcome back. Take us through the feelings that you have right now. Um, thank you. So I honestly don't really know how to feel about my game. I, I think um, I was definitely pretty happy with my position of the opening because, I mean, she kind of just gave me a pawn and it was like, okay, so it's like a kind of like a playing for two results. Um, and then... At some point, I like. I think I made it a little bit too complicated. I was missing some details here and there, so I tried to like fix it with like King H7 um, when I played that. But I don't. I gave her some time. I'm not exactly sure what the evaluation of the position was. It was really complicated, and I like. I spent too much of my time, so then I was just like, you know what? I will just play this and. I think um, the first surprise for us is that you chose the Rui Lopez instead of your usual Sicilian. How did you come up with that strategy? Um, no, I do play this like more often, but I don't play like the um, this knight f6 very early because mm. I looked at her um, when I prepared her. She always plays like d3 right away, mm -hmm. so I was like, okay. I mean, I, I didn't have anything that special, but um, that's what I was expecting. And said she did, um, yes, she did. Well, she did d3 after um, castles, and well, I, I wanted to. Well, my prep was I wanted to play some like Briar, but I don't think there's like Knight on C3, so then I wasn't really sure what to do, but I think this was okay. I also, I don't know um, exactly the opening, but I thought like Knight F4 instead of H3 might have been just like, pull up, like, I like that better for white, but maybe it's just And fine. the idea being that you go H3 now and you don't have any squares for the bishop. Yeah, because I was afraid of getting a um, bad bishop versus good knight. Right. And then she kind of um, made sure that didn't happen, so which really was really nice for me. And she gave you this pawn with e5, but you took it with the bishop, and now instead of taking with the knight, did you consider queen to e2 first? Yeah, that was my um, that was what I expected. Uh, so I was really surprised when she took on e5, and then also when she played rook e1, because I thought queen e2. Um, I mean, here rook e1 makes sense because not rook e4, but I I. The opening of the queen side um, did help me a bit because otherwise I think she could just take the pawn pretty easily. Mm -hmm. So this was just some counterplay. Now, you're a pawn up, but obviously there is some clear compensation and quite a difficult path uh, to work ma towards making any progress at this point. Um, were you playing for a, for, a, for a win right now? Yeah, um, I mean, I did like my position. I mean, it's definitely... A little bit difficult, but like when you, um, if you go back a few moves, and when I played King H7, that was just because like I, I wanted to play um, Queen C1, but uh, there I think there was Rook takes C4, um, mm -hmm. and then yep. like I was looking Rook C2, but I just don't have enough time. Rook D8, and then Queen E4, I think, and then White just stops everything. And let's show that maybe Queen to C1, Rook to D4. No, no, at that point, instead of King H7, Queen C1, yeah, and Rook takes D4. Yeah, because it just works out perfectly for, I rook think. Rook to c2. Yeah, rook c2, rook d8. King h7, and now queen to e4. And, uh, and you I'm don't just, get to her to her king? Yeah, know? I'm just like a move too slow, I think, because then rook d7. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Yes, that looks very conclusive after rook d7. Nice calculation, and you decide to uh, prepare that with a move king to h7. Now... I want to take you to this uh, moment. Rook to b7, queen to c1, king to h6. So you repeat it once. And then with one minute on the clock, you play the move king to h6. Were you worried that she has something at yeah. this point? And did you <laughs> yeah. see anything? Um, I, I think I saw some things. Uh, well, even after she traded the rooks off, I think white is OK there. There should be some moves. Did you see um, this move, rook f7, right now? No, I wasn't expecting rook f7. Does it? Yeah, what is happening? <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, I guess the idea is uh, rook, rook c2, rook queen, c2 g4. queen g4. Yeah. Yes. And then I think you have to force this endgame with queen to f4. Mm -hmm. Queen to f4, which is still probably slightly better for you, but very much close to equality. Yeah. I mean, that was kind of like a worst case scenario. If queen g4 ever happened, I always have queen f4. Um, like, I couldn't figure out, like, obviously I couldn't figure out for sure if whether king h6 was safe or not, but, I mean, I have this position, and I just, if I took a draw here, I would just feel horrible. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I, I think it was worth the risk, even though I definitely should not have done this with, like, one minute on the clock. Mm -hmm. 
No, I think it was a good decision, practically. Mm -hmm. um, king to g6 was indeed, just because you're not allowing rook f7, was the more precise move, mm -hmm. but king h6 still uh, a fighter's move at this point. Rook to b6, rook to c6. We were surprised by rook to c6. Yeah, rook to c2, it seems like it would have uh, won the game right now. Um, Okay. I would assume you calculated rook to c2. Yeah, but I wasn't sure. So rook takes e6, um, g6, g6 mm -hmm. and then I think queen g4. Queen to g4, queen to f4. Queen to f4. Oh, and then just. And now the rook on h4 is stuck. Wait, I thought I looked at this. <laughs> what, did I, what did I do? Yeah. Oh, right, right. Yeah, yeah this is right. I played yeah. rook c6 because I was planning this right away. And then um, I just played rook c6 because I was like, I, I can't figure out for sure if I'm not missing anything. Well, but you then, also had like 30 seconds on the clock. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but I remember because I thought if she played rook b8, um, I would do, what well, can play rook c2? Wait, no, no, that's a different thing. If she played rook b8 here. I think you can play rook c2. Just rook h5, right? Oh, rook h5, king g6, queen g4, yeah. This works. Yeah, so I would have to play g6 after rook b8. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm -hmm. good point. Yeah, and once again, whenever she goes queen g4, you go queen f4 and you go into that winning endgame. Very nice, but it seemed like she was getting close to achieving equality. Did you feel that way? Yeah, I did, but um, I mean, here I'm not so sure about this g4. Um, I mean, I, the second she let my pawn to b3, I thought I had just much better chances. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I don't know objectively what it is, but also we were both getting low here on time. And after this, I think I think this end game has to be winning. It's winning. Okay. <laughs> Definitely. Nicely winning. done. Yeah. Jennifer, congratulations! Now, four out of five in a, conven a conventional tournament would be a pretty high score, but there is one lady <laughs> on a perfect score, five out of five. You're going to be playing her in round seven. Mm -hmm. Are you already looking to that uh, forward to that matchup? Yeah, I mean, she's playing very really well, so I think it'd be an interesting game. Um, but yeah, I mean, I kind of believe in like, like making your own luck. So like, if I have a shot against her, then I have to take it. Perfect. Congratulations, uh, Jennifer. We'll see you after the rest day. Our congratulations as well, Jennifer.